Articulated pick and carry cranes are a very common crane used in construction, mining, and for general crane duties. They have many benefits for their users, but as with all cranes, careful consideration needs to be given to their safe use. In this video, we're going to look at the stability of articulated pick and carry cranes, because accidents have occurred where these types of cranes have tipped over. This video is intended for current operators of pick and carry cranes. It can also be used for those in training. One of the main benefits of this type of crane is that it can pick up and travel with a load. This of course means that unlike slewing cranes, they do not have outriggers or stabilizers to help keep them stable. An articulated pick and carry crane relies on its wheels as its stability base and the weight of the crane and counterweight to keep it stable. The stability of the crane can change when any configuration of the crane changes. For example, jib out, and in particular when the crane is slewed or articulated, or when it is operated on a slope. So let's look at each of these situations and see how and why the stability changes and what we can do to prevent a rollover. First, we will look at sloping ground and how this affects stability. Pick and carry cranes, designed to Australian standards, are designed to work on firm, flat and level ground to within 1% or 0.57 degrees. In practice, ground this level is not always available, as even the camber on a road would exceed these limits. And as we'll explain later, other factors can equally affect the stability or slope such as the difference in tyre pressures or a slight depression or soft spot on a haul road. Australian standards require that pick and carry cranes have a built-in stability factor of 66.6% when mobiling a load. What this means is the figures on the load chart are calculated at a maximum of 66.6% .6 of the load required to tip the crane if it was on firm level ground. This safety factor also helps to allow for the extra dynamic forces put on the crane when it is travelling with a suspended load. There are two things to consider when working on a sloping site. Is the crane facing up or down the slope? And is the crane driving across the slope, that is, on a side slope? These situations can affect the safe operation of the crane. Here we can see a pick and carry crane sitting on a level surface. Note the working radius, which is measured from the center line of the front wheels to the center line of the hook, measured parallel to the horizon. If the crane was to move to face down a slope with its boom in the same position, the working radius would increase, thereby reducing the stability of the crane. If the slope and load was great enough, the crane could tip on its nose. The tipping line would be through the front wheels of the crane. But if the crane was to move facing its load uphill, with its boom in the same position, the working radius would decrease, thereby increasing the stability of the crane. This is why the basic rule when operating a pick and carry crane is to always have the load facing up the slope. This may mean you'll have to back down a slope to maintain stability. Side slopes are more difficult to handle, and travelling on a side slope with a load must be done with additional caution and lift planning. If it is necessary, it can only be attempted within the manufacturer's specifications for the crane you are operating. Here we see a pick and carry crane on level ground with a load suspended from the boom. The load and its center of gravity are within the stability base of the crane. But if the crane was on a cross slope, the load will swing outside the line of the crane's base, creating a side load, and the crane could tip over sideways. This side slope would not increase the working radius. However, the crane's stability base is decreased as the crane's tipping line is now the wheels on the load side, not the front wheels, as in the facing downhill situation. 
and note how the side loading will increase the longer and higher the boom is. This is why manufacturers always recommend that when traveling with a load, keep the crane's booms as short and low as possible. Some manufacturers supply charts that allow the operator to determine a rated capacity for the crane when working on a known side slope. These charts show a percentage of duration required for the given boom length and angle, and the duration is applied to the rated capacity as read from the load chart. For example, using the chart shown, with a 15 meter boom length at a loaded boom angle of 45 degrees, the rated capacity of the crane is 3,700 kilos, if it is slewed greater than 10%. This rated capacity assumes the crane is working on firm level ground. But if the crane was on a side slope of up to 5 degrees, the duration chart shows for a boom in this position, the rated capacity must be derated by 40%. So 3,700 kilos minus 40% equals a rated capacity of 2,200 kilos, a reduction of 1,500 kilos. This is the maximum load that the crane can lift to stay within safe margins. Otherwise, you run a real risk of overturning the crane. And the rated capacity will be even less than this if you slew the crane more than 10 degrees. Manufacturers of pick-and-carry cranes can give two or more rated capacities for the crane for any given position of the boom. On this chart, the first rated capacity is for when the crane is articulated less than 10 degrees. The second is for when the crane is articulated more than 10 degrees. Other charts may give more options. But why is this so? To understand why this is, we need to look at the basic physics of an articulating crane's stability. Here, we're looking down on the crane. We can see the load's center of gravity at the end of the boom. The tipping line is through the front wheels of the crane. That is, if the crane were to tip, it would pivot through this line. To keep the crane from tipping, we need counterweight on the opposite side of this tipping line from the load. This side is referred to as the stabilizing side. The counterweight is made up of the weight of all the crane's components such as the engine, gearbox, chassis, cabin and extra counterweight added behind the rear axle. Two centers of gravity are shown on the stabilizing side. One for the front section of the crane, one for the rear section of the crane. These are the two sections that articulate when slewed or steered. When the crane is facing straight ahead, the crane is acting like a simple seesaw. As long as the load on the stabilizing side is greater than the load on the tipping side, the crane won't tip. But things change when the crane is slewed. Side loads now become an issue as the crane's tipping line changes. Note how the center of gravity of the rear section is now very close to the tipping line. And note the position of the center of gravity of the lifted load to the tipping line. If the boom was to be extended further, the center of gravity of the load would move further away from the tipping line, increasing further the risk of a turnover. Once again, this is why manufacturers always recommend that when traveling, always do so with the shortest boom possible. So how does all this translate into what a crane operator and his co-workers can actually do on the job to prevent a pick and carry crane from tipping? Firstly, job planning is essential. Knowing what you're going to lift, its size, what it weighs, and from where and to where the load is going to be lifted is a must. Plus identify any hazards that could affect a safe lift and the crane stability. This will then allow you to refer to the load chart and determine if the crane is capable of doing the lift safely. Hazards including sloping ground, soft ground, potholes, gutters, road verges, rail crossings, or speed humps can all affect the stability of the crane. If a front wheel of the crane was to drop into a pothole or off the verge of the road, this will have the same effect as working on a slope. The crane can go from being stable to tipping in an instant. The operator would have no time to correct the action. 
slope indicators may be fitted to your crane. These devices can be a simple bubble angle indicator or an electronic cutout device that prevents the crane from operating if it is at an angle greater than the load chart allows. These devices still require you to plan the path you intend to travel. Use the side slope indicator in the crane to help determine slope of the ground. This will then allow you to determine if the load can be safely lifted according to the load chart. This indicator should be read with the crane facing straight ahead and with no load on the hook. When driving the intended path with no load on the hook, note any gradual change in slope that might be caused by road camber or changing lay of the land conditions that might give a sudden change to the crane's angle when travelling. Follow manufacturer's specifications for your crane. Keep booms as short and as low as possible. Keep loads as near to the ground as possible. Travel smoothly at the recommended slow speeds. Cranes like this 25 tonner have movable counterweights. For road travel, the counterweight is fitted to the front of the machine. But for maximum lifting, the counterweight is mounted on the rear of the crane. It is important the operator selects the correct counterweight configuration on the load moment indicator, LMI, when reading the load chart. The operator must also ensure the counterweight is fitted correctly and according to manufacturer's specifications. Do not travel long distances with a load suspended from the hook. Pick and carry cranes intended use is for short distances only. Use tag lines to control the load. Tie loads back to the crane to prevent excessive load swing. Only tie loads back to points designed for this purpose. Plan to limit steering angles as much as possible. The less the crane articulates, the more stable it will be. Allow for wide turning circles. Never override overload protection, except in an emergency. Any movement made in the override condition must only be to return the crane to a safe working condition. Overload protection fitted to cranes supplied today have timeouts fitted, meaning that they can only be used for a short time period after which the override will no longer work. This is designed to prevent cranes being used in an overloaded state for other than retrieval purposes. Tires must be correctly inflated. Having a flat or underinflated tire can have the same effect as operating on a side slope. When traveling with large loads, the operator will not be able to see the path ahead so he or she is reliant on the route pre-planning and the directions from the dogger. The speed of all movements should be minimized to reduce load movement. Plan to keep the load facing up the hill. This may mean reversing down a slope. Plan a route that doesn't travel across a side slope. Whatever the hazard identified, it must be eliminated or controlled. For example, if potholes are identified, choose an alternative route or have them filled or place steel plates over them to ensure a level path is maintained for the complete lift. And if you're not comfortable either before or during the lift that it can be completed safely, then stop. Consider what you're doing and do not proceed until measures have been taken and everyone agrees that it is safe to continue. On completion of the job, consider how it went. Did anything happen that needs to be considered next time the job's done? If so, report it and make sure everyone involved is aware of any improvements needed to help us have a safe and efficient workplace.